Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for August 11th. Let's get started. Lots to talk about. A little bit, uh, it's going to get a little bit heated on a couple of these. I apologize in advance, but I assure you I will try my best to uh, remain calm. I'm armed with, uh, with the ability to do that. And uh, yeah, let us move forward. First article is not one of them. It has to do with the OSVR HMD. I've chatted about it several times on this channel. Uh, the last time was, I believe, just yesterday, or no, the day before, where I asked about feedback due to the just-discovered 30-day warranty. I wasn't aware of that and kind of decided I was probably going to hold off until this article from Road to VR, where they cite another article or a, a video from the iFixit folks, the same people who tore down the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift, they tore down the OSVR unit. And the unit looks very easy to repair. In fact, they scored it as being exactly that, a unit that would be easy to repair. Contrast that against the Vive and the Rift. Now, the Rift fared the worst of those two in terms of complexity of parts. And that's got a lot to do with how the parts are arranged, the number of things, the number of ribbon cables, all that kind of stuff. And I hate ribbon cables. Me and ribbon cables have a bad history together. We don't get along well. I have foobarred so many things because of um, ribbon cables, right? Anyways, the score for the OSVR was in comparison really high. Uh, it was something they felt could easily be repaired. And the HTC Vive, I mean, look at those sensors. Every one of those sensors essentially has a ribbon cable attached to it. I wouldn't open that thing with a 10 foot pole personally. I'd be way, way too nervous. But seeing the insides now of the OSVR, I am definitely more comfortable purchasing it. Probably do that within the next few weeks and have that unit to add until the Sony PlayStation comes out, which I mentioned before is going to be my next unit. Now, the next one, next one is a bit of a doozy. It is not quite as heated as the other one that we'll get to, but, but still, it has to do with Apple. And Apple is a con uh, company, I was gonna say country, they almost are, that I've had a hate-love relationship with pretty much my whole life, right? They created a computer that I didn't mind using when it was in stores, the Apple II. But at that point in my life, I was very elitist, very snobby, very PC master race. And my PC of choice was Commodore until Commodore wasn't a thing. And then it was PC. I played consoles, obviously arcade games too, but they were my younger brother's consoles and they definitely weren't my mainstay. Even though Batman on the NES from Sunsoft is to, to this day probably still one of my favorite platformers after Black uh, Tiger. But anyways, they, they were about gaming or rather gaming was a part of the equation for Apple in the 80s. They even launched a machine called the Apple II GS, which was a powerhouse. It had great sound, great video, stronger graphical features than the Amiga at the time. And they were able to do 256 colors before that was even a regular thing. Now VGA had been discovered, but barely anything was using it. It's really only around 1989, 1990 that stuff started using it, right? The Apple II GS was launched earlier. So there's all kinds of great versions of old games on that machine, right? Now, after that, Apple has never really been about gaming. And the article that I'm talking about on Upload VR is uh, Tim Cook saying that Apple is readying their MacBook Pro with powerful AMD graphics for expert users. And, you know, that's the first kind of thing wrong with that whole article is, no, gaming is not synonymous with expert. <laughs> you could be an expert gamer, possibly, right? Uh, 
but you could also be completely technically inept, but be an awesome gamer. So no, gamers aren't necessarily expert users. So they could have worded that a little differently, but minor quibble. <laughs> the main point is they didn't really clarify in the article. What they needed to say was, even if they do, you still won't be able to do VR or much gaming because these are mobile AMDs. They're better than nothing, but really the key to the gaming is going to be the full-sized GPUs. And honestly, the best thing Apple could do is if they found some way, working with NVIDIA or AMD or whoever, to make a powerful midway option, you know, because a lot of those computers that they sell, the desktop ones, are so tightly integrated and small, they couldn't even fit a real full-size video card, right? So they would need some other type of technology to be able to cater and offer virtual reality. So honestly, I don't see much coming out of that at all. It's great. They have more choice now, Apple users. But is this going to make Apple suddenly an awesome gaming platform? No, it won't nor is it going to make it viable for virtual reality. That's just the truth. They're gonna to have to do a lot more to get that to happen. Now, the next article had to do, it's also an upload VR and had to do with No Man's Sky. And No Man's Sky is the procedural game that was just launched. It was a game I'd been eyeing for a long time. It's something I wanted in my collection and down deep inside, well, not even that deep inside, I was hopeful that the devs would announce just before launch. By the way, it has VR capability. I would have been all over that. That said, with the reviews coupled with, you know, at least on the surface, it not meeting my expectations, I'm not going to pay full price for the game right now. The biggest reason, no VR. Maybe some or a winter Steam sale, I entertain it then, buy it, play it. But right now, I'm not even into 2D games. So that would be even lower on my priority list, right? So the things that they need to do to get VR to be included was what the author mentioned. And he said five areas, and he talked about camera, UI, frame rate, clipping, and controls, excuse me, as being the five areas that needed to be addressed. And the author indicated that, look, a lot of work probably isn't required to make that happen. Can you imagine, just imagine the scenario had it launched with virtual reality. I understand there's cost factors they probably couldn't afford to, right? But even maybe a Kickstarter, had they done a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo to provide additional funding on top of their budget for virtual reality last year sometime, I'm sure they would have raised the amount. A lot of us would have anteed up and supported that. So I think that was a big mistake, not coming out with virtual reality because, and no, it still would have been the game it is, right? But the perception of, you know what? VR is attracting some good hyped games and hype doesn't always mean good. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons I haven't bought No Man's Sky, but I just think it would have been more successful for all sides had they included VR functionality because it's the perfect game for it, cockpit-based. Every cockpit-based game uh, should have some ability to do VR moving forward if it's a 3D game, right? doesn't mean you have to play it, but it would be nice if it was an option. And part of that is always going to be, well, it will be once the market's there. And absolutely. We need to have VR be successful, as I so often say, for the next couple of years to really build up a base that devs are going to say, you know what, yeah, we're supporting this feature. It was the same with 3D back in the day, not 3D TV, but 3D as, as a thing, right? And the reason I specify, well, we'll get to that in the next uh, news piece, why I specify 3D TV. But anyways, I think that would have made a world of difference. The next article was one that I was going to talk about. It was literally all over the internet today, and it had to do with uh, the authors stating, many in their headlines, that virtual reality 
helped paraplegics retain abilities. And as someone who has a minor physical disability, as somebody who knows people with, you know, physical challenges, the last thing I want to do is report on something and give people false hope. And that is what pissed me off about all these articles on the internet. And I know we should come to expect that, that media outlets are sometimes the ones that do the least amount of research. And I'm probably guilty of that from time to time too, when I'm researching stuff, because, you know, especially if you're doing a daily thing, sometimes things just take more time. And I'm getting better with that, holding off on things if I need to do additional research, right? But all of them made these outrageous claims that virtual reality was helping these people, but nobody had evidence. Nobody had supporting evidence, studies, nothing. Nothing was cited, shown, or exampled to have confirmed that virtual reality was the reason these people got better. Now, with that said, I think it's freaking fantastic that these people got better. But blindly attributing that to virtual reality is not responsible. And it's not fair to those people because it could get hopes up. I, my father has Parkinson's. And he's hopeful every time a Parkinson's disease discovery is made. Nine out of ten times, they're BS. And it's great to have hope, but it sucks to have your hope smashed time and time again. So I'm talking about it, but I wasn't talking about it in the way I generally do with an article where I carry the same message. Well, sometimes I'm against it, but you get my point. I'm not going to sit here and say VR made these people better, right? The link's in the description below if you guys want to check it out. But if you just Google paraplegics, virtual reality, it's been all over, literally, right? Now, this next article is the article that set me off. This one really pissed me off. And uh, it's on tech.co. And in the grand tradition of reporting the non-existent AR versus VR, right? In that grand tradition comes this article from Adam Rowe on tech.co, where he basically, he titles it, he titles this his article, The Convincing Case Against Virtual Reality. He mentions three points. His case rests on three points. The first thing, he never makes a case. He doesn't make a case at all. He just has a bunch of straw man arguments, and that's it. Let's examine his three points or you know for the supposed case the first one being vr is gimmicky and you know what he uses to back that up yep the old tired 3d tv well 3d tv fails vr is gonna fail too straw man no it won't shut up <laughs> the two are not connected and if vr does fail and it could very well still fail it won't be because 3d tv failed that's just Drives me bonkers. The next one, VR can't mimic the way we see the world. And his point starts off with, in addition to making some people sick, and I'm reading this now, VR has a major problem. It can't replicate the actual way humans experience reality. That's his argument. And then he uses that argument to connect it, right, to his closer, which is, that as a result, the general population acceptance of VR won't happen for a little while longer. <laughs> Again, straw man. Because first of all, no shit Sherlock, virtual reality isn't the same as reality. That's why we call it VR. And he said some other stuff about the eye tracking and the head tracking. <laughs> that just blew my mind. You know, he says it does head tracking, but it doesn't do eye tracking. Therefore, no, that also doesn't strengthen your, your position. You're basically, those of us who like VR 
realize that you can't just call it it only you can't just say it only does head tracking and nothing more because head tracking is fundamentally critical to virtual reality it was the piece of the puzzle devs needed to figure out to be able to deliver vr to the masses right low latency 90 frames per second images that's what they needed to do so to say because it doesn't mirror real life it's going to fail is just it's idiotic it, it's another straw man and it's not a valid argument at all his last one though was the this one took the cake barrier to entry too high and the reward too low straw man central central station he says because vr sets cost hundreds and then here's his closer and look at the success of pokemon go no one needed to do anything as it's free everyone already had smartphones so since the barrier is high and vr people will never get their pokemon go moment it'll fail so again straw man central it's nothing to do with pokemon go he's all over the place he's scattered that's about all i'm going to say i'm not going to give the article any more time than that but feel free to discuss it with me in the comments below i will have the link and i will be back with happier stuff i shouldn't have ended it on that note right so i'm going to cheer up right now and give you guys a cheer cheers guys have an awesome one Time to get to some gaming. See you on the flip side.